I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here with Dyer Supplier to demonstrate how you can hand paint a beautiful variegated yarn with Jacquard Acid Dyes. There are 40 different colors of Jacquard Acid Dyes, and you can find all of them on the Dyer Supplier website. But don't worry, you don't need all 40. With a couple of primary and maybe some other secondary colors, you can mix almost any color that you want. And so today we are gonna play around also with a little bit of color mixing. Since we are using commercial acid dyes today, all of the tools and equipment that I am using are dedicated dye equipment and are not used for food. We are gonna play around with a few different kinds of applicators to physically apply the dye to our yarn. And then we will follow it up with steam setting the yarn so that way we can permanently set the color that we created with hand painting. Today we are going to dye 200 grams of the Dyer Supplier 8020 stock yarn. This yarn is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. This yarn is slightly higher twist than the 7525 and there are 400 yards per 100 grams. I am pre-soaking the yarn in about 8 to 10 cups of tap water with 3 tablespoons of white vinegar and I'm going to let this sit at room temperature for at least 30 minutes to make sure the yarn is nice and saturated. I have added some of my favorite reusable nylon zip ties to the yarn as an extra tie uh, to help make sure I don't tangle things up during the dyeing process. I have pre-made some 1% stock solutions to use for this project. A 1% stock solution is 1 gram of dye per 100 milliliters of liquid. So for each of these, I measured out five grams of dye, dissolved them in 500 milliliters of total volume, and then added them to these squeeze bottles to store the dye. Color inspiration can come from many sources, but I was feeling really inspired by the Knit Crate June 2019 mood board, and the theme then was Calico, and I think that a lot of these colors are really calling to me for this project. I filled four plastic cups, each with half a cup of water, and now we can play around with mixing some colors. I always shake up the dye stock before I go in to get the color. Jacquard Gunmetal is almost like a navy, but I find that navies tend to be a tiny bit more purple overall. And I just added one tablespoon of the dye to this container. It's handy to measure out the approximate proportions because then if we end up wanting more of the color, we can make more. For a golden yellow, I wanted to start with a little less pigment, and so I added a half teaspoon, which is about two and a half milliliters of the Aztec gold color. If the initial color check is a little too pale, you can always add more dye. Similarly, if you end up with a color that's too dark, you can dilute the dye further. Okay, so now we have about five milliliters total of our Aztec Gold dye mixed with half a cup of water. To create sort of a dusty rose purple, I'm gonna take one tablespoon of our blue dye, and then I am going to add some fire red. This is a quarter teaspoon a bit of the red to give us sort of a berry purple color. For our green, I am going to start with a half teaspoon of the Jacquard Aztec Gold, then add a half teaspoon of the 1% stock solution of Brilliant Blue. I am very happy with the hues of the colors we have ended up with so far but I want the green, purple, and blue to be a little more pastel. Not that the blue will be pastel, but I want it to be a little paler. So I'm adding an additional quarter cup of water to each of those cups. And I'm gonna sort of leave that yellow where it is. And here is our final color palette. If you're not happy with the colors, you can always shift things further. How did I know how much of each color that I wanted to add? Ultimately, I went with my gut, and as I started mixing things together, I decided how I might wanna shift the proportions. There's a lot of trial and error that comes with color mixing because your yellow might be way more potent than your blue, so you can't necessarily do a one-to-one -one ratio, 
but um, you can have a lot of fun playing with color mixing and so I highly recommend making some stocks and mixing things and seeing the colors you can create. Even though the work surface was already protected with the vinyl shower curtain liner, I just laid out some plastic wrap and so we're going to layer yarn on top of this and hand paint it here. And then we'll be using this plastic wrap to wrap up the yarn for steaming once we've applied the color. I squeezed out our pre-soaking yarn so it's still damp but it's not dripping. And then I've laid it out on top of the plastic wrap. When it comes to actually applying the dye to the fiber, there are so many ways that you could do this. You could fill a syringe with the dye and then sort of squirt it directly onto the yarn. When you apply more dye in a spot, you'll get more color. A little less dye, you'll get less color. Um, and I like to work it through with my hands. You will need to go over it multiple times and we will eventually flip the yarn over to dye the other side uh, because we want penetration, color penetration on all the way through the skein. You can apply the dye using a foam brush, um, which can be really handy if you want to get a more narrow line of color. If you really want the colors to not spread out when you're hand painting, you can use a thickener like guar gum in with your acid dyes. And so that is a nice way to help um, sort of keep the color from sort of diffuse, diffusing out from where you place it originally. You can use a squeeze bottle filled with your dye to apply the color to your yarn. And no matter the technique, I do like to try to spread and work the dyes through a bit with my hands. If you want the colors to strike to the yarn a little slower, you can have less acid in your pre-soak. You can even use a basting brush to apply the color to the yarn. Finally, you can just pour. You can take your cup and just sort of do a controlled pour over your yarn. Now this is probably the least controlled of these methods, but hey, it works. Again, as we get to the end, we are going to need to apply more dye to the other side. You can see that the penetration here is fairly shallow. I know we pre-mixed all of these colors, but you could also mix things together on the fiber. So here I'm adding some green on top of the yellow and intentionally blending it there versus having it blended it outside. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and add more color to the rest of the first side and then we will flip the yarn. I did mix up a second batch of all those colors. Um, but, you know, you can do however much or little as you want, and you can leave white space behind if you want. However, if you want to balance yarn, we do need to flip it. And so I just wiped around the edge, and then we're going to pick up and flip first our top one. So you can see that we got better color penetration from some colors than other others, but now we can go through and add color to the rest of this using our sort of lines that we had before as a guide for adding the color. Now this time there is a lot more liquid present already, so that is just something to sort of keep in mind as we are going through. And then you can check to make sure that you also got color penetration through to the center of the fiber. The wetter the yarn is, the easier it is for dyes to spread out on it, but also um, the less color you can ultimately put in because at some point the water will start leaking out. You do want to check the center and around different ties. Um, to make sure that you've got good color penetration all the way into the center of the yarn. But I like the little subtle variations that you can get with the hand painting. 
but especially pay attention near aha near where we have the zip ties because you can find some hidden white spots that you might not want then we can just go ahead and add our color on in once you have finished applying the dye and you are satisfied with the level of saturation you achieved it is time to get ready to steam set the yarn you want to wipe up your edge to wipe up any excess dye I like to wrap the sides of the plastic wrap up first and then I will start with one end and then do the other and then we are going to wrap this up like you would roll up a cinnamon bun or something and so roll it up into this jelly roll and then this is what we're going to steam. You can see from the pressure of rolling it up, there's leaking water. At least that water is clear. We added a lot of liquid to this yarn. I just added the jelly roll to the steam basket and we are over a couple inches of water in our dye pot. And so the heat is on and we can cover this up to start steam setting the yarn. Once the dye pot gets nice and hot and we see things start to get nice and steamy, then I'm gonna steam the yarn for 30 minutes. The 30 minutes are up. I am going to turn off the steamer basket and now allow this to cool completely. If you wanna dye more yarn, you can remove these jelly rolls from the steamer basket to set them aside, or you can just sort of leave them in here to cool off it until you can comfortably handle it. Now that our yarn is cool, let's wash it. Unwrapping. Our jelly roll and then the yarn goes straight in. The dye bath has some lukewarm tap water. From that first dip, you can see that all of the color is in our beautiful, variegated, hand painted yarn. I added a little bit of some clear dish soap um, to help check for bleeding. I like to use clear because if I use a color, it's hard to know if there's any bleeding or just the color of the soap. But our dye bath is perfectly clear. So now I am going to go rinse out the extra color and clean up the yarn to dry. What should you do if the bleeding doesn't stop and you've been washing the yarn for a while? Set it aside in some water with a lot of vinegar and let it soak for 20 minutes. If that doesn't solve the problem, then you can go ahead and steam set the yarn a second time. This time it is soaked in a lot more vinegar and so that should really help. I think I did a pretty good job creating a colorway to go with the June 2019 Knit Crate Inspiration Board. Here is the finished dry variegated yarn that we created with a few different application techniques. We used a combination of squeeze bottles, basting brushes, syringes, and even foam brushes to physically apply the liquid dyes that we mixed to our pre-soaked yarn. There are many variations you could do on this theme. You could add your acid to the dye themselves in addition to the pre-soak. You could make your color significantly more concentrated or even paint directly from your dye stocks instead of diluting them first. It all depends on what color you want to achieve. Keep in mind that things always look much more pigmented wet than they do dry. Uh, and this is something that will help, especially if you're trying to go for something really muted. But don't despair. If you end up with a colorway that's lighter than what you want, you can always over dye it. Hand painting yarn and then steaming it is just one way you could create a beautiful variegated yarn. I like this technique because it allows us to have price, precise control over where we add the color. The look we were going for was a little bit faded, a little bit antique, and I think that we nailed it. I really hope that you enjoyed coming along to hand paint a beautiful variegated yarn with me today. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you would like to watch me play around with some more yarn dyeing, you can find me on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. There's a link in the video description. 
As you play around with more yarn bases, you'll find that acid dyes bind to different fiber types and superwash versus non-superwash at different rates, which means you can get different fun results. For more beautiful bare yarn that comes in a variety of yarn bases and fiber contents at really affordable prices, check out the Dyer Supplier website, dyersupplier.com. Don't forget, you can also find all 40 Jacquard Acid dyes over there, so you can get everything you need to play with color. The yarn, the dye, all you need to do is take a deep breath and have some fun playing with color. Thank you so much for watching.